You still doing that essay? Hey, assignments if you don't mind, kid. I've been working like a Spartan here. Nearly finished it now, anyway. It's a Trojan. Is this done or fixed? Afraid not. Oh. Your mother's gone down the laundrette. Oh, right. What do you think if I catch up with her, she might do mine and Kylie's as oh, well? You're joking, aren't you? She wouldn't even do mine. Why not? <sighs> oh, Dad. There's water coming from the washing room in the back. It's soaking. No wonder my mum's got a cob on. When are you going to get Sinbad to come and have you? When Sinbad agrees to do a mate a favour. I can't afford to call out feelings, you've told you. Hey. How are you feeling, anyway? You know about Barry. You can't say his name, you know. I'm not going to burst into tears again. How do you think I feel? Used. Let down. <laughs> complete divvy. Oh. Makes sense, I suppose. Said he was thinking of leaving here now. Oh, yeah. And is that why he was spending so much time up here, eh? To get away from the nagging little wife at home. Oh, Dad, <laughs> it wasn't like that. Said he really liked her. She suits him. So why did he say he was going to leave her then, eh? Sounds to me as though Barry was trying to talk his way out of you putting one on him. No, Dad, he was really... Oh, I don't know. I couldn't have feeling for him. Oh, right. Don't, Dad. I believed him. OK, I know he was wrong. He should have told me that he was married. But at least Barry was thinking about his family. <sighs> and did you ever think about me and Jimmy, eh? When you were out getting up to all sorts or, or when you were splitting up with me mum? At least Barry cares about his children. He couldn't bear to be separated from them. And that's why he wouldn't leave, even though he wanted to. OK? Right. I'm going to go to the laundrette. And don't even think about asking me to do any of yours. Are we out tonight? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Fancy the arena or cream? Yeah, we could do both. Fancy a good night out. Mm -hmm. Are you out tonight with us, Jack? You're working, aren't you? We can go into town after. Um, no, I'm not sure, thanks. So this is a new year, is it? Get your feet up every now and again. I took half the night off. It's no big deal, OK? Well, maybe you'll feel like going out later. Yeah. Maybe I won't. My new jacket didn't last long, did it? PMT again, I suppose. See you later. See ya. You didn't have to bite her head off. She shouldn't be being friendly. Yeah, well, I had a bad night. Did ya? I couldn't stop worrying about my dad, Casey. He came in the bar last night. Have you told him about the new arrangement yet? No, but I will do. Jackie, Barry could drop by at any moment and let it slip. Look, will you make an appointment with Anna for me? What for? Also, that you can have a look at this contract off Barry Grant's solicitor. I want to do it properly. And then you'll tell your dad. Let's just see what Eleanor thinks of the contract first. Hey. Well, doesn't she know where her mouth is? Probably as much as you did at her age. She's put me off my breakfast. I'll give her a chance, will you, Tim? She's only little. Do you like that? They're nice? Yeah. What are you doing today? I don't know. Oh! Look what she's done! Can't you see some manners? Oh, all right, she's only a baby. She's a nuisance. Oh, don't make such a fuss. Why? What are you going to do? Grow up, will you? Yeah, I will grow up. Then maybe one day I'll be big enough to take you one out in the back garden. Oh, hello! Oh, hi, Dad. Are you still here? I am not. Can you use a hand? Where have you been? What is there? I thought I'd have to take our little billion to work with me. Is he all right? Yeah. Just decided to have a major kick-off, just when I'm finishing off my assignment. Are these for upstairs? No, just take them through. Never mind. I'll have to finish it after work, won't I? <laughs> so what happened to your mother? Left you to her, did she? Yeah. Well, she's got a job and all, hasn't she? Where's a bit of a chat? Oh, yeah. What did she think of Barry's happy families? <laughs> I didn't tell her. And don't you tell her either, Dad. We agreed. Remember? That's what she'd be like if she found out. Yeah, she's gonna find out sooner or later, but we can't keep something like that a secret forever, you know. No, you can't. She said she saw Peter on the parade. Oh, yeah? How right is he? Oh, she reckons he's the same cheerful bloke as he always is. She says he's either very good at hiding his feelings or he's just a lot tougher than we think he is. And what do you reckon? I reckon he must hate me for what I've done to him. 
Well, he will, won't he? He's got good reason to. Dad, do you think I ought to talk to him? You know, tell him what's happened. And what's that going to achieve? I just can't bear the thought of Peter still thinking I want to be with Barry. Well, you do, don't you? No. I just think he deserves to be told. At least then he can see I've made a complete fool of myself as well as him. I mean, what if he thinks I'm having a great time, laughing at him behind his back? Look, love, you know what I think. It's up to you what you do. But since you're asking me, I'll tell you. Leave well alone. Right. I'm off to the chippy. And, hey, you count your lucky stars you haven't got Mo McGee to deal with. Mick wants me to give her the sack, and I'm not looking forward to it one little bit. I'll see you later. See you. And, love, take my word for it. Leave well alone. I'm sorry to have brought all this to your door. I just wish you'd given me the whole story. I don't know why I didn't tell you about it before, but it's difficult for me to tell you any of it. We have to be able to trust each other. I know, but Ollie, I've sat on this for so many years. I've never mentioned it to anybody. I couldn't even talk to my father about it. I've given you ample opportunity to talk about it. Yes, and you of all people should know how hard it is to discuss buried secrets. Yes, and I also know the importance of honesty in a relationship. I mean, if Louise hadn't just popped up here, would you ever have told me about any of this? You didn't answer that before. I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea if I go to work. Oh, Ollie. I just need time to think, OK? Hey, I see. How's that lovely little nipper of yours? Ah, oh, she's brilliant. She's staying up for the weekend, you know. Ah, oh, nice one I made up for you. Yeah. Hey, do you remember when we used to share that flat together? You know, all them years ago? Yeah. You were all gooey-eyed over that other one. What was her name? Marcia. Marcia, yeah. yeah. Who would have thought today? All these years down the line, and there you are, father of a lovely little girl. Yeah, funny how things turn out, isn't it? Yeah, I know. You've been through some bad times, haven't you, kid? Hey? Well, yeah, we both have, yeah. But I've always been there for you, haven't I? Your mates. You know, standing by you through thick and thin, like. Is this about the washing machine? No. But listen, seeing as you're on the subject. Jimmy, I run a business. Now, you know the score. Now, I don't expect to go in there and get free chips off you, do I? Listen, I can sort it out with chips, fish, pies, anything you want. Yes, but I don't want chips, fish and pies. Please? Jimmy, look. I'll make it a priority to fix that machine because you're a mate. But I'm not doing it bookshy. Thanks, mate. All right, sir. All right, Mick. How's the decorating going? OK. Couldn't we start the undercoating at the weekend? Oh, lovely. Well, listen, if you need the hand, you know where I am, OK? Oh, nice one. Hey, our Leo's going to be open out as well, you know. Oh, nice one. I'll tell you what, I wish Tim had half the enthusiasm that your Leo's got, you know. Still giving you headaches? Yeah. Later. Yeah, see you soon. Ben! Oh, wish I had my own flat. Yeah, it's paying for it. That's the hard bit, though. How many bedrooms is there? Two. Come on, Apple. No, sir. Oh, that couch looks comfy. Are you looking for somewhere to stay, are you? I've got no choice, have I? Anything's better than living with Simbad. I can't be here, mate. We're full up. All right, lads. Listen, I'll uh, give you a call, OK? Where'd you pick her up from? Daisy's. All right, Tim. All right. What brings you here? Eh. Uh, I just got to see if I could move in here with you. Nah, sorry. Oh, please. You wouldn't even know I was here. I think I would. I already told you, mate, there's no room. Oh, come on. Even if it's only for a few days. Simbad's got his little sprog there and it's doing me head in. No. Me and Simbad are coming to blows. Behave. I bet you if there was a scrap, you'd be on his side. <sighs> Call yourself me brother. Might as well not even have one. Tim, it wouldn't work. We'd be arguing all the time. No, we wouldn't. Oh, forget it. And put them wrappers in the bin when you finish, OK? Hiya, Jimmy. Hi, Mo. Been a cracking day, hasn't it? Do you think so? I think it's been a bit parky myself. Yeah, I mean, parky, you know, but, uh, well, it was a bit cracking, wasn't it? 
Right, what do you want me to do? I tell you what, it's my neck playing me up or what. I woke up and I felt like one of those WWF fellas that had me in a headlock. Oh, well, mustn't complain. So? Well, um... Oh, hold on, before you give me any orders, I've had another brainwave. No. Listen, since the blue fry burnt down, we're going to get an increase in custom, yeah? Yeah, but... But nothing. They sold the best fried chicken round here, and I called the retailer and he said he'd supply us. Yeah, good one. Listen, yeah, Mo... I've got his number. Harry Marsden's his name. Yeah. You don't really like the idea, do you? Mo, I think it's a winner, but, you know, it's not up to me, kid. It's up to Mick, innit? Well, put it to him. He liked the samosa and dim sum idea, didn't he? Yeah, but the thing is, Mo... Oh, hang on, Jim. I'll have to get these painkillers for me next. No! Will you just listen a minute? Sorry, Jim. What? Nothing. Uh, I'll see you later. No props. I tell you what, we work well as a team, don't we? Oh. You drink? Please. So what is it then? You lay a bit of touch, I see. What about the beard? No. I haven't heard a word from her. I just got to thinking after you came in for petrol this morning. What? You know, about the trial and that, and... I've been trying to see things from your point of view. And? I just think I'm beginning to understand... what it was all about. Fancy a drink? Yeah, yellow steamboat, please. And just a pineapple juice for me. Steamboat pineapple and a bottle of pills, please. New shirt? Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah, look good in the Caribbean. Yeah. It's all right. He's just trying to rattle me confidence. Over what? Well, he thinks he's going to be in the nerve machine tonight with some desperate chick. Hey, I wouldn't laugh, mate. Hey, Rich, what was that woman like I was in before? What woman? The woman who was coming on to me. Oh, you mean the one with the white stick? <laughs> Funny. Ben. Please, love. Tim, we can't save you. Why not? You know why, because you're underage. <gasps> and they're not like. Look, I can't knowingly sell alcohol to under 18s. I'm sorry. Come on, Tim, you know you're out of order. All the time I get people telling me to grow up. I want to try and do it. They just tell me I'm too young. It's because you're trying to do it on your own doorstep. Look, next week I'll take you for a pint. Somewhere a bit less obvious. <gasps> Where like? The moon. Oh, he's nearly enough 18, isn't he? Yeah, but I could lose my licence. Sorry about that. Hey, have you seen them over there? Oh, you put your tongues back in. No, they are special. But unfortunately, my dog had got taste. Well, Ben, you better stay over here then, mate. I'll go over in a minute, introduce myself. Oh, I wouldn't. London looks like you have to train. Look, Ben, will you chill out? Another hour and then I knock off. And I'll lay any money that one of them will be eating breakfast in bed with me tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, like I say, just go over and do the groundwork. Oh, where for art thou, Romeo? Thank you. That's going to be magic. That's all? Nothing. You sure? How's it going? Great, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, great. What are you doing here? I thought Mick was on tonight. I just wanted a quick word, if that's OK. Mm. Well, look, Mick will be in the minutes and I want to think I'm slacking. Oh, he's going to be far more bothered that you haven't got rid of Mo yet. What's the trouble? Can't you bring yourself to us a few months? Love, it is not easy. Hiring is a doddle. Firing something else. Well, come on, let's up. I know what you were saying about how bad I was feeling about Peter and what I've done to him. <sighs> you know what I think about that. Leave well alone, yeah. But I can't, Dad. I can't just leave him feeling. Oh, God, he must hate me the way I've treated him. So what do you think you're going to achieve by talking to him, eh? We're filling up a bit, Jim. Wait and see. That's my motto. Thanks. It's 
see, I, I didn't know what you and Ollie Lane were going through until I sat there in the court. Yeah, well, you weren't there all the time with your mum, were you? No, just wish I was. There's not much I could have done, except comfort her. Maybe I could have put a bit more pressure on the GP. I doubt that would have made much difference. I sat in with my mum and that specialist and he said, don't worry, Mrs Charlton, you won't be in no pain. Yeah. She didn't need to be in pain. I'm slowly accepting that lying there and wasting away like my mum did is no way to die, but the way you did it, with a pillow, it's just so brutal. Cass, if it had been a, well, a more humane way, then we probably wouldn't have done it. Because then it would have been all thought out. And what we did was on the spare of the moment. It was the way you changed your story and told the truth in court. Letting everyone know that you believed you were right to do it. That's when I started... That's when I started to question what I really thought about it all. I promised my kids I wouldn't lie, no matter what happened. I thought it best that our Leo and Gemma know that I told the truth. Listen, I better be going. Would it be all right if I stopped by every so often, you know, to see Leo and Gemma? Birthdays and that? Feel free. Only... They're the only family I've got left now. Hey, uh, Cass, um, those clothes of your alone, you can take them with you if you want. Oh, no, you do what you think best, eh? And thanks for... Well, just thanks. See you around, eh? Yeah. Good day. Could have been better. My fault. We didn't exactly leave on the best of terms this morning. It's just that, well, you only say what's absolutely necessary and only when you're really pushed. It's not the sort of thing you just blurt out. Oh, by the way, darling, did I tell you the father of my long-lost daughter is a violent criminal? Yes, but something this important, you should have told me. I didn't think it would have to come out like this. Why do you think I was so terrified when Louise turned up? Yes, I can understand that, but you've kept me in the dark. I never realised it would go so far. I was trying to protect you. The same way you're trying to protect Louise, by lying to her. OK, yes, I lied. Pulled the wool, call it what you will, but I did it because I was ashamed of what I was, what I did. I can understand all of that. Oh, well, how bloody decent of you. I don't think you have any idea how hard this has been for me, raking all this up again. I was embarrassed about what I did. And what I want you to understand is just how scared I am. Hiya. Hey, I thought you were going to tell her tonight. Oh, I tried, boss. But, I mean, she's dead keen and that full of ideas, isn't she? I can't afford her, Jimmy. I can't do it. It's too hard. Right. Hey, Nick, great news that you got the verdict. Can't tell you how pleased I was. Yeah, thanks, Mo. Look, hey, yeah. But you know what? I think they should have thrown a party for you. You know, a celebration or something. I wanted to put up welcome home balloons, but... I think you would have got up Cassie's nose. Yeah, you're probably right. Hey, and the samosas and dim sum are selling brilliantly. Yeah, thanks, Mo. Look, Oh, yeah. hiya, Bernie. Sausage dinner and a fish separate, is he? Please. He has the same every Friday. Look, Mo, uh, you know, now that I'm back on the scene, um, I wanted to uh, review the staff arrangements. Oh, if you want me to do more hours, I'm up for it. No, um, it's the other way, really. Yeah, I'm letting you go. What? Yeah, I don't need the extra help anymore. You're sacking me. No, I'm not sacking you. Um, but I'm letting you go. Means the same thing. I've worked hard here. And I appreciate that. Well, obviously not enough. Oh. Oh, forget it. I've got a bad neck, you know, but don't you worry about it. Well, nice working with you, Jimmy. Yeah, nice one, though. <sighs> I just feel a bit sick. Thought this was post wrapping in the mornings. Okay now. I'll be fine, thanks. Are we still going downtown? Uh, no, you can go. I'm gonna get off to bed. Well, do you want us to stay with you? No, as if. This has been going on for a couple of days. Are you signing for something? Well, well, it might be the flu. There's loads of it going round. Well, bed's the best place for you. I'll go and get changed. Excuse me. Hi. 
What's up, sis? Might be a uh, tummy bug. Or the flu. Ah, oh, bad news, eh? Listen, is it all right if I get off? My taxi lined up in ten minutes. We're in with these three. Nice one. I'll take the darker one and the blonde one. <laughs> Already spoken for it. Look, I know you don't want me to say it, but you look worse than you did before. Can you get downtown with your sad whim? Your wish. Right, I'll get off. Mike, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to stay. Oh, come on, Jack. I'm on with the Baywatch girls here. Yeah? Well? Can't someone else do it? Well, you're the most experienced one out there. Oh, come on, Jack. Oh, Mike, don't make it all for me. I've got to go up to the flat and lie down. But I'm on here. Oh, it was all right when you wanted an advance on your wages, wasn't it? But I want overtime, OK? Go stop saying. And if this sickness carries on, you better go and see a doctor, hadn't you? <sighs> Going well, isn't it? Oh. Well, you've been pregnant, what? Five minutes. It's already affected your social life and now work. As long as my dad doesn't find out, I don't care what it affects. Now, if this sickness is anything to go by, you're not going to be able to keep it from him very long. Gangster's mob. Won't he shoot me if he finds you in here? I just wanted to explain a few things. Oh, I. It's Barry. He's. He's married. Seems one partner's never enough for some people, doesn't it? You're okay. I deserve that. Well, that's very big of you. I just wanted to say I'm really sorry. And I've messed everything up. I've made a fool of myself and an even bigger fool of you. You'll never know how much you have messed it all up. Things were great between us before he came along. And Kylie, well, she was made up having a man about. You were getting to be just like her dad. And now. She asks where you are. And... Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I hate you. Is that it? Close the door on your way out. Friday comedy kicks off next with Ellen, who finds herself in a deep, meaningless relationship. But I can't stand much more of this. Because if I keep on at him, he'll eventually cave in and give us some discount, won't he? I'll get a move on, will you, Lindsay? You've got my stuff to do and all here. I'll give the hand ringing out, then my arms are knackered. All right, I will, if you put the cap on. Right. Oh, love, there's nowhere to hang anything in here now. How are you going to get this lot dry and there's all my stuff to do and all? I've run out of socks and pants, you know. I've got to have clean ones dry for the morning for me teaching practice. Oh, poor Dad. Don't expect any sympathy from me. It's your own fault. You should have had a word with Sinbad. Anyway, Mum took a full load down the laundry this morning. She won't be doing yours as well. Do you know something? It's years since I've done anything like this. When me and your mother were first married, we couldn't afford laundrettes. That was a luxury. Special occasions only. Listen, I'll make you a deal. 
I'll do the ring and out if you do my washing. <laughs> you must be joking. Dad, I am due in work this afternoon after I've picked up Carly. It looks like you're gonna have to go to the laundry while my mum looks after the kids. Anyway, I feel like getting my hair done. All right. Fancy a night out, do you? No. Just feels a bit lifeless, that's all. Anyway, I could do something to cheer myself up a bit. Good idea. You can go when you've done the washing. Oh, yeah. Peter to put acid on me. I'd never mind shampoo. Oh, don't talk soft, will ya? He treat you like any other customer. Dad, he as good as threw me out of that salon the other day. Well, Lindsay, what do you expect, love? For him to welcome you back with open arms and say all is forgiven. Don't you start on the I told you so stuff as well, Dad. <sighs> to be honest, I don't know what I expected. At least I got a chance to tell him what had happened. <laughs> I did him to think I was laughing behind his back. Yeah, well, love, all that's finished now, isn't it, eh? Time to look to the future. So get that tea brewed while I see to his juice. Now, that is a laugh. Listen to this. Dear Mr Dixon, why not get the state-of-the-art television on credit? That's not a slap in the gob for people like me. I can't get credit at my bank, but according to this, I don't even have to put a deposit down. Mm. So I can have a TV delivered just like that and be even deeper in debt. Mm. Hope our Michael doesn't see this. You're not listening to me, are you? Hmm? I said Molly Marchbank was on the phone earlier. Oh, when? You heard that all right, didn't you? I always thought you were a well-mannered sort of bloke. Oh, I'm sorry, Ron. I was just trying to work out how to fix this blasted gutter. Yeah, you couldn't be bothered listening to me until I mentioned her name. I do wish you'd stop castigating, Molly. It, it really is wearing a bit thin. You won't be saying that when she's wearing a hole in your wallet. Why are you so bitter? Molly is a perfectly decent, respectable woman. Bing, you've fallen into the same trap as I did. Only you've been warned about what you're getting yourself into. Thanks for your concern, Ron, but, um, quite frankly, I've missed having a bit of female company since Jean settled in France, and Molly is... Right up my street. Hi, kid. Oh, yeah. Little Ruth is still around. Oh, no. She's gone to play group with one of my mate's kids today. Well, when she gets in, you bring her over to play with our Carly after school. Oh, yeah, she'd like that. How's Tim? Oh, he's driving me mad. Can't get him to shift. He's got no interest in work, education, nothing. Yeah, and our little Jimmy was the same. Couldn't get him to do a thing. And then they only end up in trouble, don't they? I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Well, just hope it's a phase he's going through. Mm. But whatever you do, don't give up trying, cos he's not a bad lad. Out. Anyway, love you and leave you. Got a hot date with the laundrette. Is that your washing? <laughs> yeah, I've got loads of it. Our machine's gone on the blink. Oh, we'll come and do it in ours. Are you sure, love? I've got to dry it as well, you know. Yeah, we can do that and all. Listen, one of the pigs are living with Sinbad. Come on. Nice one. Eleanor, Jackie Dixon for you. Thanks. Hi, Jackie. Hiya. Oh, Katie, could you get me the depositions on Abigail Harding? She's entering a plea at the Crown Court tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Right. Well, the uh, contract from uh, Mr Grant's solicitor all seems fairly straightforward. He usually does make sure everything's worked out carefully. Yes, but... Well, if you don't mind me saying so, it all seems a bit drastic. Why? Well, I've, uh, dealt with a few business contracts before, but this is really rather different. But I thought you said it was all straightforward. Well, it is. What's the problem? Well, I've never been asked to, to advise on a contract before where a business is changing hands, but there's no mention of any financial transaction. Well, there's no money involved at the moment. What, so you're simply signing over your business to this Mr Grant? There's no legal problem with that, is there? Well, no. Not unless for some reason... Well, how can I put this? You feel under some obligation to sign over your business. I mean, I, I know that this sort of thing does happen in the bar and club world. It's just a straightforward business agreement. I had heard some rumours about the bouncers in Bar Brookie. Yeah, well, there's always rumours. OK. Well... As your solicitor, there are some pitfalls I should point out before you sign. Listen, I'm sorry I've got to go, but I've got to go and pick little Ruth up. No props, kid. Tell keep you company. Oh, great. Another thrilling day. Yeah, all nice. Carmel, this is dead good of you, love. 
The doll machine on the blink. Jackie's got too much to do by hand. I bet she has, poor thing. Yes, so I thought I'd lessen the load. Like, it's not going to put you out, is it? I mean, I've got my own powder. No. Is that all you've got for the five year? Two loads? You're choking, aren't you? No, I thought if I looked after my own gear, it'd take the pressure off Jackie, wouldn't it? And I've got a little bit of our carnage drying and all. Oh, aren't you a little cracker? Hey, marriages are a team, kid. That's what I say. You help yourself. If there's anything else you want to do, and just bring it over. All right. See you later. All right, love. to ta Right, Einstein. Which button is which? What? How does this thing work? No, you're just asking me. Brilliant. It's a bit posh, isn't it? Just have to wait till your mother comes back. Hey, give us the racing page out of that paper, will you? Do you bet on the horses? Do I bet on the horses? I'm an expert, mate. I do, but I'm crap at maths. We are, then I'll teach you. No, sir. Don't like teachers. Hey, if you stop gabbing for a minute, you might learn something. I'll show you how to work out odds. And that's what teachers like me call maths. Well, that's another job well done, I think. Do you reckon? You don't seem quite your rebellion self. Oh, I'm just thinking. What about? Not me life. Everything. I mean, what have I got, Bing? A dodgy ticker. A son who's got no ambition. A daughter who seems to have his share of ambition as well as her own. And half a trendy wine bar. That's not all bad, is it? Yeah, but what am I doing, though? A couple of years ago, I'd have been up that ladder myself, fixing the gutter, instead of leaving it to an old fella like you. Hang on. Not so much of the old, if you don't mind. I just don't seem to have any go in me these days. I mean, look at me. I'm 50 years old, and slippers are starting to look like the new uniform. <laughs> well, perhaps you could do with a tonic of some kind. Nah, the only thing I need is a good woman. Are you sure that's really the answer? I'm afraid so. I know I messed things up with Bev, but I really miss having someone around. I think you need something more constructive in your life. Like what? Well, maybe take up a hobby. A hobby? How is that going to make me feel better? Depends what it is. Nah, it's not a hobby I need. I need to feel useful. Because I'm not working full time. I've worked hard all my life, you know. It was my life. No, I haven't got that. I haven't got anything. Well, can't you increase your contribution to Bar Brookie? Well, oh, Jacqueline would never have that. She's not going to have me pushing in there. I reckon she thinks I'm past it now. I'll well, prove her wrong. Read the trade papers, find out what new ideas are being floated around, show her that you don't have to be young to be fashionable. Do you reckon? Absolutely. The business is half yours, isn't it? What you need to do is to demonstrate to Jacqueline that you are every bit as keen to take that business into the millennium as she is. Right? So, look. If it came in a three to one and you put a five it on, you'd get... Fifteen quid. Plus your steak. Twenty, twenty quid altogether. Nice one. And don't forget, you're going to pay the tax when you put the bet on. Otherwise, the swine's take it out of your winnings. <laughs> oh, I love, all right. Still on? Um, Jimmy's just teaching me how to bet. Oh, is he now? Uh, no, not like that. Um, we didn't know how to get the machine going, so I'm just waiting for you to come back and that. Uh, it's only maths, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Tim, go and check on Ruth. Oh, yeah, I was just getting into that. Do as you told for once, eh? It's hard, Jimmy. It's great. Look, Jimmy, I appreciate you trying to help, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I wish you wouldn't teach gambling to our Tim. I mean, my dad was never out the betting office. Anyway, come on, let's get that washing done. Listen, Carmel, I didn't want to cause any trouble. It's just that the lad thinks he's last at maths, but he's not his sound. Everything becomes clearer when you apply it to life. That's all we were doing. Yeah, but he doesn't need to know about betting, does he? Yeah, but what good is algebra or what's it? Pythagoras to a kid like him. I'm worried sick about him hanging around the house as it is. The last thing he needs is you encouraging him to go down the betting shop. No, I wasn't, love. So are both you and your father aware of the tax liabilities? Well, I'll be seeing my accountant next week, so she'll be sorting all that out for us. Good. 
Um, sorry to disturb you, Alan, but CPS don't know Emily Devine again. Line one. Would you excuse me a minute? I've been waiting for this call. Would you like a coffee? I won't be long. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> I've been getting the third degree, haven't they? Yeah, well, she's very thorough. I've had to answer all sorts about my dad and why I'm doing all of this. To be honest with you, Jack, I think she's dead suspicious about it all. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious. Well, she can't understand why you're just signing over your business. Yeah, well, I haven't got time to worry about what she does and doesn't understand. Thanks. I just came for advice. I don't know why. You never listened to it. Is she gonna let me sign this contract or not? Hello, Alan Kitson's office, Casey speaking. Thanks, love. Listen, sorry about that better thing before. Well, I don't worry about it. At least she kept him interested for half an hour. Oh, kids, they'd have you up the wall, wouldn't they? Oh, don't say that. Your Lindsay's grown up now. Should be giving me some help. She's as much trouble now as she was when she was younger, love. In fact, she's more of a worry now. And is me think that's gonna get easier, eh? Oh. No such luck. Mind you, all Mel's getting a bit more independent now. I don't know how you cope with your William, you know, it's such a gap. Oh, well, he's all right. He's a nice little kid, really. I mean, it was hard at first, like, but the old skills soon kick in, don't they? Oh, huh? yeah, like getting your jacket to see to him in the middle of the night. Yeah, 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 I do my bit, if you don't mind, especially now he's teething. <gasps> I remember when Tim was teething. God, I couldn't settle him. Terrible hard work. Mm, nothing's changed, then, eh? Is he much like his dad, or what? Well, a little bit, you know. Flies off the angle of things, get on top of them. Mm. Our Jimmy was like that. Especially when me and Jackie split up. You did, not did you? Yeah, yeah. We had a big bust up over things, you know. Yeah, went our separate ways for a while. For long, like? Yeah, long enough for our Jimmy to get into all sorts of lumber. So do you think it's true, then, that they're better off having a dad around them? Depends. I mean... If you listen to these family therapists and that, they reckon that, you know, you're worse off if there's no dad around. But what if he's the sort who knocks them about, eh? Or worse, like Rachel Jordash's dad did. Oh, no, Simba, tell me about him. Yeah, well, if you ask me, I reckon you're better off struggling on your own than having some fella around the house who hits you and the kids. True. But I can't help worrying about our Tim. I mean, his dad died when he was still little. I ended up bringing him up on my own. I don't know, I feel as though I've let him down in some way. I tried my best, but I couldn't replace his dad. Yeah, well, like you say, you tried your best. What more can you do? Yeah, but what if that's not good enough? I mean, I, I just can't get through to him anymore. Listen, you brought him up the same as Mel and Ben, haven't you? And they've turned out all right. There's only so much you can do. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. It's not your fault, I know that. Anyway, he's grown up. He'll be leaving home soon. And you and Sinbad will be able to get on with your own lives. Oh. Right, thanks, Mr. Furness. I'll be in touch. OK. Thanks. See ya. How are you feeling now? I'm oh, fine now, thanks. Mr. Good night out. Yeah, I know, but I do feel best for the rest. Are you up in the night? Yeah, but I'm OK now. Him, that fellow was a decorator. I'm thinking of giving the place a new look. All right. I hope we get any uniforms. We just have to wait and see. Hiya. Hiya. Um, Rach, could I have a coffee, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I wonder how she put that contract, you know. Oh, she's not still on about it, is she? Well, after you went, she asked me if anyone was putting pressure on you. God, you didn't say anything to her, did you? Of course not. Anyway, it doesn't matter now because I've signed it. She was pushing me for info about your dad's involvement as well. Yeah, well, it's all like a demo now. <laughs> oh, no. All right, ladies, how are you all? Fine, thanks. You oh. should tell your dad not to work so hard, Mr Dixon. Rachel. Why? What's wrong, Jack? No, I'm all right, taking the notice. Um, you should be finished now, shouldn't you? No, I've got ten minutes to go. Yeah, well, it's all right. You can go now. I'm not busy. Well, if you say so. See you later. ta da love. Uh, can I have a word, please, Jack? Um, yeah. Don't worry, it's not about money. Well, not directly, anyway. No, I've been thinking how we can make this place a bit more bouncing. Oh, why? Valentine's Day. It's already sorted, Dad. Good thinking, Easter. I've got a promotion going with the brewery. Right. Well, anyway, about this place, and I'm not one to be spending money, as you know, but I thought, well, as we're a year old, perhaps we could do with a new look, maybe a lick of paint and... Yeah, well, I've just seen the decorating contractor. I see. So, um, when was all this decided? Well, I always try to be one step ahead, don't I? Yeah, but I am your partner, Jack. Sleeping. Yeah, OK, granted, I might be in the background, but I'd like to be a little bit more involved. Yeah, well, that's just the way it is, Dad. 
All right, all right, keep your hair on. Just thought it would be nice to be consulted every now and again. If only out of courtesy. Look, Dad. What? Oh, nothing, just forget it. You need a good night's sleep, young lady. I've already had one. Yeah, but you still look tired to me. And it's obviously making you forget that little thing called respect. I'm not just your partner, Jackie. I'm also your dad. Remember? Don't say a word. No. from home and it's Russian Spring still in the lead from... Do you mind getting up and into the door? I'm a bit busy out here. It's not going to be for me, is it? I'm putting Nickelodeon back on for Ruth. Oh, she's not even watching it. Move, will you? Hi, love. Hey, I'm just going to see our Ruth. Go and take her for a walk and get out the way of the telly. Hey, you. Hi, Ruth. It's all right, love. Fine, thanks. Hiya. Jimmy, your drying will be done now. I'm all right, kid. How are you, darling? Darling, you sound like an old woman. Did you have a nice sleep last night? Move, will ya? Don't do that, just ask her politely. Come on, shift, will ya? Don't push her like that. We'll move her out the way and I won't have to, will I? Don't you dare threaten her. Shut up, will ya? Do that again and I'll kill ya. Oh, will you now? Yeah. What are you playing at? It's here. I'm sorry, Carmel, but he's been nasty to Ruth. No, I wasn't. I was just watching the racing. Oi, she's just a tot. So, will you ask my sister to move? You don't lay a finger on her, OK? Did you touch her? I didn't hate her. Did I hate her? You're a bully. I'm going out. Hey, Tim! Don't you push me too far, son. Oh, what? You'll get Simbad onto me. That's it, you can get out and stay out! Well, that's fine. Right, better pop over and see how the troops are faring. Rod, is this straight? Yeah. Nice to have a role in life, innit? Oh dear. I take it your business ideas didn't go down too well with young Jacqueline. In the words of General de Gaulle, no. Why not? Well, she'd already made her own plans, hadn't she? But she can't have thought of everything. No, I don't suppose she has, but it seems that my two penneth isn't required. In fact, I'm surplus to requirements. I'd have thought your being a partner entitled you to have some say. Well, without Jackie, no chance. She's a very tough businesswoman, I'm telling you. I'm getting even tougher for some reason. Prefers you as a sleeping partner, eh? Comatose would be more like it. Now, oh, well, just have to have another look at my life, won't I? Well, look, Ron, for what it's worth, I'm always here to offer any advice I can. Bing, it's not advice I need. It's the love of a good woman. You had that. You messed it up completely. If you're talking about Molly the Dolly, think again, will you? Don't take your bitterness out on her, please. Do you know what, Bing? I'm surprised at you. Letting a woman come between our friendship. Because that's what she's doing, you know. Pushing mates apart. Hi. Hi. Who is it, love? Special delivery. Thank you. All right, what is it? Sign for it though. It's very important if it's a special delivery. What is it? Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Where's it come from? Lindsay, there's hundreds here. That's right, buddy. This is for you. Do what you think you should with it. What does that mean? Absolutely shattered. Is that all we're going to hear for the next nine months? Have a bit of sympathy, will you? Hiya. Oh, yeah. It's the barb, is he? Yeah, chocker. I'm just grabbing an hour off. Are you sure you're not sickening for something? You seem to have lost all your energy. No, I'm fine. I'm just tired. Yeah, but you always are at the moment. Oh, don't worry about her, eh? I'm bound to worry. She's my mate. Yeah, well, I don't need a mother hen. Forget it, then. Is it OK for you, sweet then? Oh, no, I forgot. Don't binny. I'll have it later. What are you talking about? Nothing. I just thought it was past its sell-by date. All right. Listen, is there something going on that I should know about? No. We were just on one. You know what it's like once you start. <sighs> yeah, if I'm included, I do.
fifteen thousand pounds. And why has he sent it to you? I don't know. Why has he sent it to me? Do what you think you should with it. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? A lot of money, that lens. Yeah. Bit of luck, eh? At least your mother won't have to go to the laundrette again now. We can't keep it. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. He sent it to you, mate, but listen. This will come in very handy for all of us, won't it? Well, I can't keep it. I mean, where's it come from? How did he get it? Lindsay, who cares? But I'll tell you one thing. He didn't get this sort of stuff from working in the chippy. Well, why has he sent it to me, eh? And what am I supposed to do with it? Well, that's up to you, love. But I'll tell you one thing. If you've got a problem deciding, I can soon give you a list of what we could spend it on. She doesn't let me get it. It'll be the bar problems again. Hello? It's Katie. Oh, hi, Susanna. How are you? Um, no, she's out. Um, no, she's not in work either. I think she's gone over to see her mum. OK, I'll tell her. All right, then, bye. Was that for me? Um, no. Well, who are you saying is gone over to see her mum? Me. Well, it was Susanna, and... Yeah, and I didn't want to speak to her and put my feet up. I won't even bother asking what she wanted you for. See ya. See ya. I wonder when Max and Susanna got back. <sighs> Don't know. I'm glad I didn't answer the phone. Well, would it have mattered? You're all going to tell her, aren't you? Yeah? You mean like you told your dad he's not your partner anymore? Katie, I will do it. I just wanted one more night before I tell him. Another night? Do you mind getting us a drink, please? Do you want some vodka? No. I've had my last proper drink for the next nine months. I just want to enjoy this last night in peace. Because, <clears throat> as from tomorrow, my life changes. I'm officially carrying Max and Susanna's baby. Why do car accidents happen? Crash concludes next on 4, searching for the answers along our highways to hell. early this morning? Yes. I had rather a heavy workload. I thought I'd get on with it. You were out early yesterday as well, and you work late. Yes. We're very busy at the moment. You're not trying to avoid me, are you? Of course not. It's beginning to look that way. Well, things aren't exactly brilliant at the moment, are they? No. Yes, love. Does this look nice for the party? Oh, way hey, now. That's what I call a real party outfit, that. I'm not so sure, kid. I mean, you look really, really pretty in it, but, uh, well, don't you think you'd look better in that nice little velvet outfit you had on for What's Her Name's Party the other week? Now, that is gorgeous, isn't it? Hey? Hiya. Hi. Say hello to your mum and go and put that other dress on, eh? Hey, darling. Mwah. He's a good girl. 
Oh, thanks for getting her ready, Dad. No problems. Keep her as mob busy at dinner time. Come between the pot there. All right, thanks. Where's my mum? Hasn't turned up yet. Just getting this lot sorted out before she comes back with the next load. What? What? You know what? Have you decided what you're doing with that money yet? No, I haven't. Oh, right. And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Good. Right. Better go and get ready for Demi's party then. Oh, this'll mess me flow up, Mr. Dixon. Rachel, as long as I sign for the cash, love, there won't be any hassle. Can't you just wait till your Jackie comes out of the office? Here you go. All sorted. Oh, well, I suppose you do own the place. Makes me wonder sometimes. Oh, all right, love. Uh, I've had to take a few bob out the till. All oh, right. See, we operate a profit sharing scheme here. Dad, can we have a little chat in the office? Sure, love, but a bit later on, eh? I've got to be somewhere. No, Dad. See you after. <sighs> all right, Simbad. All right, Lynch. Almost new. It looks brand new. Yeah, I know. I'll just clear the young couple's house. We married for three months and just split up. Oh, wasn't over the washing machine, was it? Uh, no. Look, I told you, Alpha, I'd have a look at that washer, but... Look, we don't expect you to do it for nothing. Yeah, I know you don't. Uh, don't suppose that couple had an almost new washing machine, did they? Well, as a matter of fact, they did, but it's already gone. Oh. And you, I've got a fairly decent one over there for 120. 120? Um, look, maybe you should have a look at the old one. You might be able to do something with it. Yeah, well, I'll book you then. Ah, here comes trouble. Yeah. Where's my mum? Do you mind? I'm talking to a customer. That's all right, Sin. Where have you been, anyway? I kept the devils. As if you care, anyway. We were worried about you. My mum kicked me out. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. She told me to go and not to come back. Isn't that the same thing? She was annoyed at you because of the way you treated Ruth. And if I'd have been there, you would have been kicked out. It looks in bad. I'm going to get off. Yeah, all right, Lindsay. I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah. See ya. Tell her. It's annoying having a kid about all the time. She's only a baby, Tim. You've got to be patient with her. And it isn't all the time. I hardly ever see her. So when she is there, I want you to treat her properly, OK? Where's my mum, anyway? She's took Mel and Ruth into town for the tea. I'm meeting them oh, later. I take it. I'm not invited. Oh, and you would have wanted to go, wouldn't you? Well, I might do, if I was asked. Tim, stop thinking everybody's against you. Me and your mum only want what's best for you. Well, you've got a funny way of showing it. I'm just worried that she's going to rob you soft like she did me. I think the least said about that, the better. Listen, been an offer you come to this country in Western do with me. I'm sorry, Ron. Molly's got tickets for the concert. I love classical music and I'm looking forward to it immensely. Yeah, but I'm your mate, aren't I? You should be coming with me. Anyway, there might be some decent women there. Sorry, old son. Prior engagement. And what am I supposed to do with the spare ticket, like? Oh, I'm sorry, love. Were you talking to me? No. Julia. Oh, Julia. Ron's just been telling me he's got a spare ticket for a country and western evening. Oh, I love WC. That's what we call it, don't we, Ron? Uh, C and W, actually. <laughs> and one of my favourites is that Gareth Brooks. Yeah, well, you see, the ticket isn't that spare yet. I thought you said you were looking for someone to take along. Julia would be a perfect partner. Oh, thank you, Ron. Yeah! What are you playing at? Uh, I was um, just having a look. More than a look, wasn't it? What's going on? Uh, I was just having a look and then he started kicking off. He was trying to rub some of the limo. No, it wasn't. Well, what were you doing then? Like I said, I was just having a look. You will go to a museum if you want to look at things. Ha uh ha. -huh. Is that supposed to be a joke or something? All right, look, nothing's been taken. So why don't you just get out my way and I'll be a very happy man? All this because I was just having a look. Hey, listen, if you work with Simba, I'd give you a good kick off the backside. No, come on. Do you want to? Move. Yeah, I might just go to London, get away from this dump. Come on, where are you going now? Mind your own business. Is he ever going to sort himself out? Ah, do you know what? I feel like kicking his backside myself. He wasn't a robber, you know that. Yeah, I don't know. Mick, I'm running out of ideas of what to do with him. You know, he needs a job or something to keep him out of mischief. So. Mm, well, he won't listen to me or his mother. Well, there's got to be something out there for him. And the way he's going, it's going to be a prison cell, mate. Thought about it a lot. I even spoke to Simba about getting a new washing machine. Oh, great. When's he bringing it around? He isn't. Dad, the moment I seriously thought about spending that money on you wasn't right. 
Great. So we'll just have to keep on going to the laundrette then, won't what we? What do you mean, we? You've been taking your stuff over to Carmel's. All right, all right, you know what I mean. So we're not going to spend it on a washer. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Be great to keep it, wouldn't it? And they use it for things we need. Oh, I even thought about using it for our Kylie. Putting in a trust fund for her when she's older. Yeah, good idea. But you're not going to do that, are you? No, I'm not. So what's the problem, Lindsay? You know as well as I do. As soon as we opened that envelope and saw how much was in it, we knew, didn't we? But oh no, we pretend it's like we've won the lottery or something and think of all the things we could do with the money. But we know, don't we? Why did you lie to me, Dad? I mean, all that rubbish since we've come back from Birmingham about how grown up I am, how I can make my own decisions. Well, how can I if you won't even tell me the truth? How did Barry get you to cover it up for me? I mean, I asked him straight out. I said, did you steal that money from Peter? And you? You told me that he didn't and I believed you. God, Dad, you've made a complete fool out of me, both of you. Come on, Lens. Just because he sent you 15,000 quid doesn't mean that he took it from Peter. With a note saying, do what you think you should. That's conscience money, Dad. But it's just as stupid macho pride that stopped from sending it straight to Peter. Oh, no. He has to make out he's this wonderful, caring human being. But all he's done is made a complete fool out of me. Again. Oh, you feel a fool, do you? And what about me? A couple of weeks ago, Lindsay, I went running down to Birmingham and groveled to Barry Grant. And do you want to know why? Because you're my daughter. Listen, love, we all make mistakes. I'm just trying my best not to be scrub champion of the year. Yeah, OK. All right, he sent you that money. But have you thought of this one? Maybe that's just his way of trying to say sorry. Hey, hey! What happened to Wild Bill Jenkins? I thought we'd have a bit of classical. She Wears My Boots is a classic. I meant classical in the sense of Beethoven or Brahms. Oh, really? Well, whatever you say, Wild Bill stays. Thank you Run. very much. I have had to listen to this morbid trash about truck drivers running over their pet cats for long enough. Can we have a bit of fairness round here? That's class. Look, I'm sorry. I can't tolerate this anymore. It's my turn now. Oh, come on, Bing. You never even thought about playing any music till I put my sounds on. 20 minutes of wild Bill Jenkins is more than any sane person can stand. Oh, I see. You're saying I'm not sane now? Well, come to think of it, your behaviour over Molly did suggest that you might be a few, um, banjos short of a hootenay. Thanks, love. Hey, Hello. All right, sir. All right, mate. Throws a fish cake in, will you? Low fat one. What else? Camel would kill me if she does. I was eating the ordinary ones. You're the least of her worries. I don't know if she sticks it with Tim. She's a saint. If that was on me, I'd have sores at him years ago. Well, he has been rose up when I was a dad, hasn't he? Yeah, and I chose. Yeah, well, it might not be the only reason, you know. He obviously needed more discipline, sir. Yeah, well, look at me. I was brought up without a mum or a dad. And I'm not a scally, am I? Yeah, you're one of the lucky ones. Look, all I'm saying is that lads need a man round them. Uh, aye, aye, are they for me? Flowers for Johnson. You what? I must be a few fancy man, eh? You were out and you were delivered to you, so look after them for you. See if you admire them. Who knows? Got a dash. See you later. Ta-ra, Kate. Flowers, eh? And the secret admirer is... Well, come on. Hey, why'd you let him, will you? Oh, no. What is he? Blast from the past. Blew the off. So pleased justice was seen to be done. Pity it wasn't done for me. Mother was always. Jenny. Oh, not that, Ed Case. Never gives up, does she? Well, it doesn't look like it. You can put a dress on the back in case I want to write. What I can do without all this. Look, I'm through worrying about rubbish like this. If she ever shows up, I'll sort her. It's as simple as that. I thought we might go out for a meal. What about Dan? Oh, he's over at a friend's. Oh, I'm not so sure. I've had a busy day. Oh, fine. Well, I'll rustle us up something. Uh, pasta, or would you like a takeaway? I only feel like a salad. Why do I feel like a naughty schoolboy who's trying to impress his favourite teacher? I'm sorry. I just don't feel like a romantic dinner for two. Apparently not. Oh, well, perhaps you should have expected a bit of emotional baggage. Yes, but I didn't expect a skipful. Oh, 
how naive. I mean, did you think you'd just have to deal with maybe a couple of simple, broken relationships I'd had? Maybe I should start explaining them as well. Yes, all right. Committing yourself to a relationship means that you have to accept that there might be a couple of skeletons in the cupboard. Yes, but some things are easier to accept than others. Oh, like incest. Oh, I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. Totally. <sighs> Look, I've committed myself to this relationship more than I thought I would. But you're making things very difficult. I'm not making it difficult. I'm just trying to understand what I'm... what we're both involved with here. Oh, maybe this is too much for us. Is that what you think? I don't know what I think anymore. Oh, look, love, even if Barry did take that money from oh, stop Peter... stop kidding yourself, Dad. We both know Barry took the money. Yeah, well, even if he did, that doesn't mean you've got to give it to Peter. Look, what happened had nothing to do with you. I mean, what was the lad doing? Wandering round with £15,000 in cash in his pockets? If you want my opinion, he was asking for it. him. it's Peter's money. I mean, if my mum had been here when the cash came instead of you, she'd have made me take it straight back to him. Oh, would she? Well, in that case, you know, when you mention to her about the money, don't forget to tell her that Barry Grant's married. Oh, I can't tell her that, can I? No, you can't, and you can't tell her about that money. Look, love, I know it's a problem for you, but there are some things that your mother is best not knowing about, and that includes anything to do with you and Barry Grant. But it doesn't change anything, though, does it? I mean, not telling me mum about the money doesn't make it right to keep it. Well, give it back to Peter, then, if it makes you feel any better. And how can I do that? I mean, what is Peter going to think of me if I suddenly turn up and hand him £15,000 in cash? Oh, hello, Peter. You know when I came to tell you Barry Grant was married and you told me to get lost? I forgot to tell you that it was Barry that nicked your money. I'm sorry and all that, but my dad reckons you deserved it. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Oh, so what then, Lindsay, eh? Send it back to Barry. And what's that going to achieve? Peter gets nothing, and Barry thinks you're stupid for giving him something back that he shouldn't have had in the first place. And we don't even get a new washing machine out of it. OK, so what am I meant to do? And don't tell me I'm grown up. Don't ask me, love. I've told you. I don't want to make any more mistakes. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, well, actually, I, I was rather under the impression the Guildhall held concerts. Well, I do normally, but um, it's, uh, it's country and western tonight. Oh, well, well very bold. Yeah! <laughs> well, it's straight in, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a point for the electric slide. <laughs> uh, I don't... I really think that you have to link me, Julia. We're partners, aren't we? It's the dumb thing. Don't you remember all the old cowboy films when Jane Russell used to walk down swinging her umbrella, linking her map? I don't mind, do you? No, no, not at all. But when it comes to music, I've got a pretty Catholic taste. Everything from uh, Shostakovich to Shirley Bassey. <laughs> but not much country. <laughs> well, there's uh, Wild Bill Jenkins. Uh, I get quite worked up about him. <laughs> Shall we find a seat? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Molly, there's, there's a couple of seats here. Oh, right. Yes, I know, but you can't stay in the bath all night, son. Ooh, there he is. Right, let's get you dried off and sorted and tucked up, eh? Here he is, here's the little ducky. Here you are, there you go. Oh, Linz, get me those nappies from the top of the stairs, will you? Hey, 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 hey. Let's try under those arms, eh? Oh, big fella. You daft old dad's forgot the nappies, but your big sister's gonna bring them in, isn't she? Yes. Here you go. Oh, thanks, love. I'll carry yes. you all tucked up. Yeah. Everything all right? Yeah. Just thinking, if only. Oh, listen. <laughs> you knew the number of times I've said that in my life. I mean, what would have happened if you hadn't met Barry at the funeral? Where would it be now? Probably living in some nice flat with Peter and Carly running the salon. Nice, ordinary families. Should be with the lives. You couldn't be ordinary, love. However hard you tried. 
what Barry used to say. And look where trying not to be ordinary got me. Yeah, well, you've got to try, haven't you? You can't just roll over and let it all pass you by. Look at me and me teaching. If I'd have listened to other people, I'd have never have got started. Yes, I'm Fred, sir. Is that his lady friend with him? I think it's uh, actually the first time they've been out together. Really? Poor thing. Molly? Good evening, Ronald. Hello. Don't you two know each other? Uh, yeah, we used to. What are you doing here? I was a surprise, Ron. Oh, I see. Classical night out, eh? Can someone tell me what's happening? I don't know how well you know this man, but I would advise you to think very carefully about how much you've got in the bank. You what? He'll lay on the charm. Molly. I'm sorry, David, it has to be said. Then he will wine you and dine you, but in the end, it's all just a smokescreen, because I have to tell you that he's really only after your money. You are? I thought he got me widow's pension. Take no notice of her. From one woman to another, he is a con man. Me? I rather think you deserve that. Are you really after my pension? I'm sorry about that, David. Something just snapped. Now I've ruined your evening as well. No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I did wonder whether you were enjoying it. Well, it's not my kind of thing, really. I bought the ticket for Ron. I mean, the music's fine. It's, it's just, uh... Would you fancy a quick step? Yes, I would. Right. Let's show these people some of our fine and dandy footwork, man. relationship that's gone this far before except with Marcus if anyone ever got too close I finished it well, what makes me so different perhaps the belief that you could cope if the going got rough no problem there as long as I know what I'm dealing with and now you know that I haven't been completely honest with you you have to trust me I was scared I don't think you understand how much your opinion about all this affects me. You know, I've held this together brilliantly for 18 years. God, I'm so bloody smug. Why didn't you just tell me? Because I'd... I'd bottled it up. I tucked it away safely on the shelf, watertight. It was as though none of that was even my past. And then Louise turns up. Well, maybe it was unrealistic to think that all this would never happen. I know that now. Ollie, I need you. I don't think I can cope with this on my own. A nice chocolate biscuit before getting back to my elementary geography. Do you want one? I'm all right, thanks. Have you thought of taking me mum one off? Oh, I didn't. She's got a cup of tea up there. Anyway, she might get all confused with her dunking. <laughs> yeah, it's all working out not too badly, isn't it, eh, considering? You know, you and me at the chippy. Your mum with our William, me at college. Well, if you don't count us being knackered all the time. I mean, have you ever known me mum to go to bed this early before? And we can't even afford to get the washing machine fixed. Unless you're after all champ for that. You seen Shim bad, haven't you? He'll see us right when all the right parts come in. Oh, Dad, I've just had a thought. Imagine, you know all that stuff that Barry bought me? It must be worth a fortune, mustn't it? Imagine if I sold it. We could easily get a new washing machine. God, I don't believe you. And I stood there watching you putting it all into a bin bag. What have you done with it? Well, it's in the bin, where do you think? You what? Lindsay, that's a bit daft, isn't it, eh? You could have had it all sorted, and there's you making some big dramatic gestures, throwing it all away. <sighs> Dad, it'll be long gone by now. Look, if you still want it tomorrow, you're going to have to go down the tip. The tip? 
What's the point of that? The tip match will have had the lot. Lindsay, I don't believe you. How could you? All that expensive stuff. And if we had to sold it, where would we have told my mum where the money came from, eh? I mean, whether it's Peter's £15,000 or what you get for a second-hand Armani suit, it's still Barry's money, isn't it? The luck of the car, girls. That's what it is. Why is it that we always come this close to... <sighs> Lindsay, if only you'd still been with Barry. If only again, eh, Dad? If only we could stop thinking about what might have been and really be grateful for what we've got, eh? Come here. If you want me to be with you on this, then you have to make an agreement with me now to be open and honest. With you, yes. But what about Louise? Well, learn from my experience. Covering things up is no help at all. I lost my family through fudging and dishonesty. Oh, I'm just scared about what'll happen when Louise finds out the truth. But if you don't tell her, and if she finds out about Marcus from some other source... Oh, God. What about all the lies I've already told her? I mean, I abandoned her as a baby, I dumped her father, and now I've got a running round at Reading looking for him. Exactly. So the lies have to stop. You're only making things worse. But she may reject me. Well, that doesn't mean you shouldn't tell her. She has the right to know everything. How she deals with the truth is up to her. But you have to tell her. Well, next on 4, meet the Slimming Club members who every now and again ditch the diets for a blowout of puds and pies in TV dinners. Pops, what have you been taking yourself to? <laughs> I've been making a few shrewd investments that will increase takings and help attract back some high-spending, fun-loving customers. You what? Games, Michael, games. That's what all the trendy gaffs have these days. It's all the rage on the continent and all. So you don't? Yeah, I've got everything here. I've got chess for the intellectuals, drafts for the thickos, and that kaplunk for all the wacky student types. But even got some jigsaws for all the Billy No Mates. <laughs> so, uh, what's put out all this on, then? Well, it just gives people something to do, you know, enjoy themselves. And what else will they be doing while they're sitting here for hours on end? Drinking. Exactly. I'm telling you, anybody who plays a full game like this will spend a fortune. So, um, what does our Jackie think of your big cunning plan, then? Well, if it helps increase takings, what, what can she say? <laughs> I'm sure she's going to find something. I told you, Michael, don't worry. We'll be laughing. <laughs> Yeah, but will our Jackie be? What's going on? Been getting your Christmas shopping and Ellie? No, nope, it's my dad's big master plan for the games area. Um, Dad, any chance of having a word? There's something I need to speak to you about. Yeah, but I've got a few things to do first, love. Can it wait? It's important. Yeah, well, uh, I won't be long. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you back here at dinner time, eh? We can, uh, do lunch. You all right? You look a bit queasy. Yeah, yeah, um, just got a bit of a hangover. I overdid it last night on the cocktails. <laughs> Not you to drink on the job, is it? Yeah, well, I just felt like a few last night. Ah, oh, well, it's a little loud, isn't it? Mm. Don't worry about the papers, I'll get them yourself, will I? 
So, do you think this is a good idea? I thought you'd crack up with him. Yeah, well, it's not really the right time for that. Not until I've told him what other changes have taken place around here. You're fighting a losing battle there. <laughs> You're not kidding, no. I mean, they just drop it on it without giving it a second thought. You can hardly blame the kids. They see their parents dropping litter. What's it like in the park, isn't it? When they take the kids to feed the ducks and that. I mean, they just lash the empty bag on the floor or they tie it to some railing. They haven't got a brain off of it. I mean, I've always taught Leo and Gemma never to drop any litter. How are the kids after the trial? Oh, they're fine, thanks all. I mean, they cool all really well, you know. Did it have any effect on Leo's GCSE mocks? Mocks? Yeah, yeah, they took them just before Christmas. Dan got his results last week. He did really well. I didn't even know they were taking them. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's hardly surprising, is it, after, after what you've been through? <sighs> Leo never even mentioned it. Sir. I can't believe that. Right. Uh, well, well, listen, I'll, I'll catch you later. Yeah, see you. Hi, Mick. Hi, Jack. Listen, Fim, Jimmy's not in college today, so if you want him in a bit early, just give him a ring, you know. You could do with extra money, as usual. Yeah, right, I'll do that, Jack. What's up, love? Oh, just a bit of parental guilt, you know. I forgot something really important that our Leo had on. I'll see you later, Jack. Yeah, ciao. Thanks a lot, Steve. We'll see you next yeah. week. Oh, cheers. Hiya. Hello, love. You okay? We'll be if I can get on a plane out and somewhere out and far away, yeah? Mm, wouldn't we all? Holiday do me the world to good as well. I was thinking of something up a bit more permanent, you know, like emigrating. Really? I'm going off with cakes in now, dear Jack. After everything that's gone on. I thought 97 ended badly. I didn't think 98 would get even worse. Well, you can just pack your bags and get off, can't you? I mean, you get work anyway, you know. Work's no problem. It's this massive loan I've got hanging around my neck. I'm going nowhere till that's paid off. <laughs> Still, try and cheer myself up with a sausage dinner, eh? Yeah. Things will get better, love, you see. I doubt it, Jack. See you later. Sure. The Tim settled. It goes a bundle on these things. Right, cup of tea. Yeah, have mum, love. Hey, come on. Let's get that out of the way, will you? Your mother will be back in a bit. She'll go off on one of she sees that. Paddy don't think I'm stupid, whatever I do. Peace a while. You can blame her for what he thinks. So I might as well have my mum tell me what a mess I've made of everything as well. I mean, she's going to find out anyway, isn't she? Well, not if you give it back to Barry, she won't. It's going back to Peter. It's the least I can do. Come on, she's here. Look, get it out of the way. Just leave it, eh, Dad? OK, Lindsay, it's your choice. Oh, way. Is no one going to give me hands here? Hello. Oh, there you go. Two's on the go. Oh, thank God for that. You know it's major in that long dress today. You all right, Lindsay? What the hell is that doing there? Well, Jimmy, you haven't been. <sighs> right, well, come on, tell me. Where did it come from? You haven't got this, honestly. It's nothing to do with him. It's mine. It's yours? Well, where's it from? Well, one of you had better tell me something. It came from Barry. <laughs> nice to know. I was hoping we'd heard the last of him. How much is there? 15,000. 15? And why is Barry Grant sending you 15,000 pounds? Well? Jimmy? How long have you known about this, eh? Why didn't you tell me? I told him not to, because I needed time to decide what to do with it. You needed what? There's nothing to decide, is there? You send it back to Barry. God knows where he got it from. Could have been anything. Drugs, probably. Barry's got nothing to do with drugs. Oh, and you'd know, wouldn't you? Listen, it doesn't matter how he came by us. It's got to go back. You can't keep it, Lindsay. Fifteen thousand pounds. What does he expect you to do with that? Do you know, I've just seen poor Peter on the parade. He is in bits because he got himself into debt trying to please you. Trying to please me? Oh, yeah. He's talking about Emma Grayson. What? I 
Oh, I get it. 15,000. Exactly the same amount that Peter got mugged for. You told me you had nothing to do with it. You came back from Birmingham and you told me! You're useless, Jimmy. I knew I should have gone down there myself. Oh, don't talk, stupid woman. That wouldn't have made any difference. And what Lindsay does with Barry is her own business. You knew as well. All along. You knew Barry took Peter's money. Of course I didn't. What do you think I am? Oh. Do you really want me to answer that? Well, if you've got one ounce of decency left in you, you'll get straight round to Peter and you'll give him that money back. And you'll just have to hope that he doesn't... Well, do you know what? He could be forgiven for whatever he did to you. I managed to find plenty of old newspaper cuttings from the Central Library about the eco-warrior and world saviour Marcus Seddon. Well, he certainly had his supporters. Oh, yes, and his detractors. Animal madman attacks scientists. Evil animal rights thug destroys top scientist's career. I remember. Well, depending what you read, he was either a hero or a despicable villain. Well, he certainly provoked a reaction. Oh, yeah, he definitely did that all right. So, what was he? A saint or sinner? Well, at first I thought he could do no wrong. But after he attacked that poor man in the lab raid, well, I couldn't believe that the same person could be so vicious. Well, the question is, what will Louise make of it? I don't know. She could be attracted to some romantic notion of him. I'm afraid if she finds out, she'll see him as some kind of eco-martyr. Well, maybe that's what he's become. According to latest reports, he's stuck to his cause over the years. Yeah, some of these are quite recent. I mean, he's obviously politically active, even though he's in prison. Yeah, but where is he? Can you find him? Well, I can contact the prisoner location service, but as soon as I request his whereabouts, he'll be informed. Mm. So he'll know you're looking for him. So what do you think I should do? I mean, should I try and get some more information, or should I sit tight and see what happens? Well, that depends on what you want to tell Louise. Well, if I do tell her, who knows what I'll be letting her for? And not just her. All of us. Been doing a bit of shopping, have you? <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> you checking your ovulation charts and your temperature? Oh, yeah. Let's hope this time we'll be successful. Yeah. You're not thinking of backing out of our agreement, are you? Him. It's a bit late for that now. Good. Well, can you give me a hand with all this lot? Um, I ca can't. I don't think you're supposed to carry anything heavy. Why not? Well, you're not allowed in my condition. In your condition? Anna. Oh, Max. Max, it's wonderful. I knew we could do it. We're going to have our baby. those things for Kylie. These tights are pretty well added. You'll have to get us some more. Well, with the money we got from Barry, she can have all the tights she wants now, can't she? You're gonna keep it then, are you? In spite of what I said? I'll make my own decision in my own time. But whatever it is, I'm sure you'll find a way of finding fault with it. Well, you know what I think. Oh. We always know what you think. Everybody does. Well, you make sure they know, don't you? Why are you so quick to judge everyone? I mean, it's always so easy for you, isn't it? Not always, no. 
But there's no question about this. I don't know how you can even think about keeping that money. It's pieces. It's stolen, for God's sake. Are you so besotted with Barry Grant that you're prepared to see a poor lad fall apart when you can at least do something about this? He's fallen apart. What about me? I didn't make an offer to buy half of that salon of Chucky Dixon. I mean, if he wasn't so quick charging up with all of his plans, none of this would have happened. I wouldn't. So, uh, you reckon it's fine, do you, for Barry Grant to throw around stolen money on anything that catches your eye? But you blame Peter because he's trying to make a decent future for you and Kylie? Lindsay, you've got to give the money back. Mother, I've told you. I'll make up my own mind in my own time. And you slagging me off isn't going to help me decide. So will you please just leave me alone and let me get on with making a mess of my own life in my own way. Everything okay with your meal? I'm not fussing on that tuna salad myself. It gives me terrible wind. I hope you're going to make the most of our new attractions, i.e. complimentary daily newspapers and our new games area. I've got chess and scrabble for the intellectual types. Uh, right, well, uh, enjoy the meal and uh, please feel free to play some games. All right, love, where have you been till now? I'm sorry, Dad, but something's come up. I can't make lunch. Hey, Jack, I thought you said you'd had something really important to tell me. Well, I have, but we'll just have to wait till tomorrow. Come on, love, you got me on tender hooks now. Look, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Mike, is everything all right? Yes, all, yeah. Yeah, well, if there's any problems, just give me a ring on my mobile. See you later. Yeah, ta-da. She's definitely up to something. And I've got a feeling I'm not going to like you, whatever it is. Thanks very much, Mrs. Thanks a lot. See you next week. See you tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Everything okay? Yeah, um, I just come to give you this. What is it? It's yours. If I were you, I wouldn't ask any questions for your own sake. Just be glad you got it back, okay? to you, love. Mick, one minute. I just want to have a quick word with our Jackie. Jackie! Jackie! Hang on a minute, will you? What have you been doing? What you should have made our Lindsay do, the minute you found out about that money. I'd give it to Peter. OK. There you go, man. Sorry about the other fella. Oh, that's all right, love. Here he is. Hey, couldn't persuade her to try the samosas, eh? Well, can't they blame her? Hey, listen, Jimmy, I'll have to get off when our Leo turns up from school. Got a few things to sort out, OK? Yeah, sound, yeah. You need all the OVs I can get. We're going to get our washing machine fixed. Yeah, well, it could be a while, you know, before they get me hand on any spare parts. I mean, I could look for a nice cheap second-hand one for you if you want. Yeah, well, you better make it very cheap, cos that's the only way we're going to get one. Listen, boss, if you're getting off, do you mind if I nip on? You know, when I've done the cleaning and that, like... Eh, yeah, won't work, you know, Jimmy. You are? The samosas. You never get it to like them. <laughs> so, um, what are you going to say to Leo about his exams? What can I say, Sid? Except I'm sorry. Mm. How do you think he's done? Put it this way. Even if he'd have just done okay, I reckon he'd have told me. Yeah, well, at least he's having a go, isn't he? Not like that other waste of space called Timothy who was making our house look untidy. I bet you just feel like, like lashing them up, don't you? Well, that would solve so many problems. Nancy Campbell going for it, can you? Mm -hmm. Anyway, leave it to it. Ta-da, mate. Yeah, see you soon. All right, mate. How are you doing, mate? All right, sir. Everything OK at school? Yeah. Everything OK? Yeah, yeah. Everything OK? Look, Ollie Simpson was telling me that Danny's had his results from his mock exams. Have you had yours yet? Yeah. Hey, look, you've got nothing to worry about. There's no need to be scared, however you did. I've done really bad in everything, except religion. All oh, right. Well, look, I'm dead sorry, son. 
Oh, after everything that's gone on, it's no wonder you didn't do too well. Especially as I wasn't there to help with your revision. I didn't want to say anything. I knew your head was chocolate with the trial and everything. Thanks, son. You didn't want to get the results if I go mad. Yeah, well, let's forget about them for now. Listen, do you fancy going to the park for a kickabout? I've been there for a while, have we? Yeah, all right. And then we can have a talk about school. See if we can work out how you can pass these exams. Can we play footy first? Yeah, of course we can. So, past your religion, eh? Don't fancy a job as a priest, then? <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, that was lovely, but I think I've eaten too much. But you are eating for two. Mm. <laughs> Who knows, it could be twins or triplets. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're one in a family and there's none in yours. How about you, Jackie? Um, no, not that I know of. Your dad hasn't got, got some deranged twin running around as a called Reggie Dixon. <laughs> no, just one of me dad's enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Emma. I'll do the rest. Oh, Max, I mean, that's a bit unfair. Poor old Jackie can't drink. Ah, you don't mind, do you? No, of course not. You deserve it. And you deserve all the help and attention we can give you. Yeah, but let's not forget, we don't want the whole world to know, so we've all got to be discreet. Yeah, I think what Jackie is trying to say is she doesn't want to be fussed on that. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, no. I won't. Just as long as you know, if ever you feel unwell, or you need anything, or just someone to moan to, you can ring us or call around whenever you want. Oh, thanks. But we've got a few things to sort out, like what we're going to tell people. Well, I agree, but, uh, well, let's talk about that tomorrow, because today, let's celebrate the good news, eh? Oh! <laughs> I'll have my champagne after the baby's born. <laughs> Here's to the three of us. And our baby. Cheers. Mm, cheers. <laughs> Busy afternoon? I spent most of it thinking about Louise and Marcus. Thinking about your ex-lover all afternoon. I don't like the sound of that. Oh, don't be silly. Do you know what I mean? To be honest, I don't. I know you're really worried about Louise, but are you sure you're not worried about your own feelings towards Marcus? Wally? What else am I supposed to think? You kept a check on him for 18 years. Are you sure it's for the reasons you're saying it is? I haven't kept a check on him. I just know he's still in prison somewhere. I don't even know where. I haven't communicated with him in all these years. I mean, surely if I had any feelings for him still, I'd have been in touch with him before now. Well, what I'm worried about is that you won't really know your true feelings until you see him again. There is nothing for you to worry about. He'll never split us up, OK? OK. Good, because I've got enough to worry about without you getting all jealous on me for no reason. Hmm? You did it, didn't you? I did what you should have done. And what's that going to look like to Peter now, eh? I've decided I was going to tell him what had happened. You know, try and convince him that I had nothing to do with the mugging. See if I could at least put some of the things between us right. No chance of that now, is there? Not if you handed him the money. Well, so all of a sudden you decided to go and see him. What do you think I've got this bloody thing on for, eh? But you didn't even explain anything to him, did you? You didn't tell him that even if Barry had found out about the money because of me. I didn't know what was going to happen. Mum, if I'd have thought for one moment that Barry was going to do something like that, I'd never have said a word. So, there you go, Mum. You're the one who always said I should stay with Peter. Well, there's no chance of that now, is there? Has she told you what she did? Yeah. She did it, even though I asked not to. Nice one, Jack. Oh, well, that's a surprise. I suppose you wanted her to keep the money so you could get your hands on it. Don't talk soft. I don't know why you're taking her side. I thought we agreed you were going to get Barry to give the money back. That's why you went down to Birmingham, isn't it? Oh, well, obviously, Barry Grant just sweet-talked you the same way he did our Lindsay. Yeah, you're right. We did agree. But what I found out when I went to Birmingham was that she is not a little girl anymore. Have you forgotten what happened when our little Jimmy came back, eh? 
We tried to treat him like some little kid, and where did it get us? He probably have managed a damn sight better without us trying to run his life for him. He was a smackhead! What was I supposed to do, Jimmy? Just let him bring that muck into the house and leave it to us? Same with you and all of it left you on your own. Yeah, well, you're more of a kid than he ever was. Yeah, well, maybe we should have just left him to it. But we'll never know, will we? Because it's too late now. But it is not too late for her. What she and Barry Grant choose to do is their business. I am sick of saying it, Jackie. Their business, not ours. Right. Well, it is while she's living under my roof. If she's going to behave like that, then she can clean house and live somewhere else when I don't have to be part of it. Do you really mean that, Mum? Yes. I don't know what's happened to you, Lindsay. But ever since Barry Grant came along, you've forgotten the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Right, then. If that's how you feel, go and pick up our Kylie and take it to her Auntie Val's. Nice one, Jackie. That sorted everything out very nicely, hasn't it? With the film Titanic currently on release, a documentary on the survivor's story hears from the passengers who actually lived through the disaster. That's tomorrow at 6.30, here on 4. Where are you going, will you? Sorry, mate, sorry. I just think so and all. You nearly locked me flying there. What are you doing? Nothing. I'll see you later. <sighs> I feel horrible. You're lucky. You better not let Rachel see ya. It's just gonna be dead hard hiding this pregnancy from everyone. Especially from your flatmate. <sighs> Who's on the phone first thing? Susanna. I'm sure I'm all right. Has she calmed down since you told you you were pregnant yet? No, not really. She's like a new woman. Is she really fussing over you? Yeah, I've told her that I don't need wrapping up in cotton wool. And Max has warned her too, but I suppose she can't help it. You, know, you better watch her. You might start drawing attention to yourselves and you don't want that. I know, but before I start worrying about all that, I've got to face my dad today. I still can't believe you haven't told him about the bar. I have been meaning to, but I just keep putting it off. Yeah, you're gonna have to break it to him sometime, or you might find out from somewhere else, and then you will be in trouble. Okay, you get off too. I don't want to be still. Oh, it's lovely. Mm, it's nice. And what is with this all over? Um, Rachel, have you finished the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, I've saved you some. But, uh, it's not with Jackie. Jackie? Not am I. No, oh, I just thought she looked a bit poorly. Thank you, my love. That's just what I need to set me up for an hard day's work. I don't know how you could turn against me. And in front of our Lindsay as well. Well, I meant what I said, you know. If she can't behave herself, she's not welcome in this house. Well, can't cut your tongue. Have you heard yourself? What's all Lindsay done to deserve all this? <laughs> huh? I don't believe you, Jackie. You've stood by me through far worse than this over the years. Whatever it did, however much I drove you mad, you stuck by me. 
And now you're just going to turn your back on our Lindsay just like that, eh? Your daughter. And what about little Kylie? Trying to teach our Lindsay a lesson, aren't I? <sighs> she never listened to me before. Oh, right. So what you mean is she hasn't suffered enough, hmm? That listening to you saying, I told you so all weekend isn't enough. Don't talk soft. And what about you? Yeah, I did stand by you, Jimmy. And when I want you to back me up, what you do, you take all Lindsay's sides. I'm not taking anyone's side, love. Except ours. Our families. Oh, it doesn't look like that to me. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jackie. Lindsay is in bits about what happened. We should be supporting her. We should be boosting her confidence. Let her know that we love her no matter what. She lets the likes of Barry Grant make complete fools of us in oh. front of everybody. Oh, no. I don't think so, Jimmy. OK. I'll see you later on. Bye. That was Louise. She'll be here around lunchtime. So you're going to tell her the truth about her father? Well, I know I should, but... Oh, I don't know. It'll be worse if she finds out the truth for herself. Well, how could she? Well, I don't know. What if this Marcus decides to come looking for his child when he's released? I think it's more than a possibility. Well, maybe I should leave it a while. Wait until she's not so fired up about finding him. Well, you said yourself she's not the type to give up easily. She persisted until she found you. You've got to either tell her today or not at all. And if you don't tell her, well, you just have to hope that he never comes looking for her. Anna's working from home today, so I've got the office to myself. Oh, good. I might need somewhere to hide after I've told me dad the bad news. Why do you think he'll take you? He lit the roof. But what else could I do? But I didn't give me much choice. Have you thought about what effect all this is having on you? You shouldn't be under the stress in your condition. Oh, Casey, don't you start. It's bad enough having Susanna fussing over me. Yeah, but you've got to face up to it. You can't go around behaving like you normally do. That is exactly what I have to do. Otherwise, people will start suspecting something. Oh, I get it. Is everything all right, Jack? Yeah? Why? Nothing. Hello, Peter, come in. Hiya. Hiya. Sorry to call around so early. I wanted to catch you before you went to work. I've just got to talk to somebody. Why, what's up? I never believed this. Jackie Corkill strolled in the salon yesterday and handed me 15 grand in a jiffy bag. You what? Go away. Honestly. What, was it the money that was robbed off you? Yeah? It must be. Hey, you were made up. Well, I am, but my head's cabbage. I mean, where did Jackie get it from? Well, what did she say? Not to ask any questions, just be glad I've got it back. Peace is right. How come she had it? Can you tell me? Hiya. Do you want me to give you a hand with that? Still a few bits of Kylie's in the bowl to be wrong out. Look, Mum, I know you think I've done everything wrong, but why can't you just leave me to try and put things right my own way? Oh, yeah. And the money Barry Grant stole from Peter would still be sitting in your undies drawer. It wouldn't. I was about to take it round him when you stuck your nose in. Now, listen, madam. You're not the only one who has to live round here, you know. It's all very well saying now what you would have done, but I didn't see you running round to the salon. Oh, well, you hardly gave me a chance to, did you? Why would you have to treat me like some little kid? I can't make my own decisions, you know. Oh, can you? Yeah, that's what your dad keeps saying. Let her make her own mind up. You're turning into a spoiled brat, you know that. You think you can do whatever you like, don't you, just because your dad keeps telling you that you're a grown-up? Well, I think it's about time he started to behave like one. Ah, have you been doing my jigsaw? Uh, it's not your jigsaw, son. It's for the customers. Yeah, but I've nearly finished it now. Yeah, well, you can't expect people not to have a go if it's lying there. I mean, that's what it's there for, isn't it? I'm gonna have to get this covered up, make sure nobody tries to finish it. Michael, can I have a word, please? Jackie, will you get off my case? Stop him for a minute to put one piece in. Save it. I don't want to talk about your work or lack of it. I just want to ask you something. What? Well, there's some news I've got to tell me, Dad, and I think you should be there when I do. <laughs> Why, what's up? Well, you'll find out when I tell him, but just keep an eye on him, cos I think it's gonna be a bit of a shock, and I don't want him getting all waved up, OK? OK. Get me 
Rachel's coming for you in about five minutes. Yeah, sure, yeah. There you are. I was waiting for a call to come and pick you up from the station. There was no need. I got the bus. Public transport will only ever improve if more people use it. So, how was the trip? Excellent. Did you get my postcard? Yes. Great news, eh? About tracking my dad down. Well, yes. But you don't want to get your hopes up. I mean, are you sure that it's him? Well, it must be. I went round all the bike shops in Reading, and one of them had a guy called Nick working for them in the early 80s. It must be him. So where is he now? Ireland. They've still got a forwarding address for him. That's great. Yeah, I want to get over there as soon as possible. But I'll tell you about it later. Is there any chance I could have a bath? I've been travelling for hours and I didn't get a time for one this morning. Sure, help yourself. Great. I feel really grotty after being cooped up in that coach for so long. Shall I make us all some lunch? Yeah, please, I'm starving. So, Ireland, eh? What are you going to let her go? Oh, why not? Do her good to travel the world a bit. But it's just putting off the inevitable. Anyway, think how she'll feel. I mean, at best, it'll be an embarrassment, and at worst, it'll be just a, a terrible disappointment. Well, who's to say the truth won't make her feel worse? I mean, she seems to have this image of him as some romantic, freewheeling hippie. I mean, what's she going to say when I tell him he's doing 30 years for what amounts to terrorism? You know, if she goes to Ireland, the chance of her finding this Nick bloke are virtually nil. Yes, it'll be a disappointment for her, but... When she reaches a dead end, she'll have to stop, won't she? Look, it's all in the past, Dolly. Let's just leave it there, eh? You can't just let her traipse off to Ireland in search of God knows who. I think the decision has already been made for you. You've got to tell her. So, what's all this about, then? Look, before I tell you, I just want to say that I did try and stop things turning out the way they have, but... Well, there was nothing that I could do. Blimey, Jack. You're going to tell us the world's about to end? <laughs> it's about this place. When Barry got rid of the Finnegans, he didn't do it for fun. I had to pay him a lot of money. Yeah, I know, love, and I just wish I could have been a bit more help, but... Well, with this dodgy ticket of mine. No, it's not your fault, Dad. If you'd have stayed around, it would have got heavier, wouldn't it? I mean, if he wanted to bleed the place dry, and he would have done only for Barry. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Barry isn't exactly the most understanding person to be in debt to, so when I couldn't raise his money on time, we, um... Oh, come on, Jack, for goodness sake, tell us what's going on. Well, after I missed his deadline, Barry came to me with a new proposal. Well, it was more like an offer that I couldn't refuse. He's demanded a share of this place, isn't he? In exchange for the debt. Never thought I'd finish up in business with Barry Grant. Well, um, you haven't. You see, Barry's proposition was a simple one. Hands over the business or there'd be no business. You what? You can't do that. Oh, and who's gonna stop him? Not you. You would already had a piece off the Finnegans and God knows what Barry did to those two to get rid of them. We're out just like that? Well, he said that he wants me to run the police for him. Is he real? Well, um, I've agreed, cos he said that he'd pay me 50% of the takings to manage it. <sighs> oh, so you're all right as usual. Oh, and what else was I supposed to do? Let Barry torch the place and lose everything after all the work I've done? And what about me dad? Dad, don't worry. I mean, it might take me a while, but I will see that you're all right. I'm sorry, Dad, I really am, but there was nothing else that I could do. So do you want me to sign something? Well, um, I got Alma to put an agreement together. He's enough to sign it now. He can take it home and have a read then. Give me a pen. Dad, there's no rush. Pen? I promise you, Dad. I'll pay you back every penny that you put into this place. See ya. Dad, you're all right. Do you think he's all right? He's gutted there. I know. I thought that he'd go mental, but... Oh, God, he'll be so nice.
felt a bit over the top for lunch. Well, sandwich would have done. <laughs> well, you ate it all, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm stuffed. Well, you better be hungry later, because I'm cooking dinner and I'm doing a really nice seafood casserole. Are you two trying to fatten me up or something? No, we're just pleased to see you. Well, let's hope my real father is when I eventually manage to track him down. I just hope he's at the same address in Ireland, or that whoever's there now knows where he's gone on to. Louise, Eleanor has something that she needs to tell you. Oh, yeah, what? Well, it's something... Oh, this is very difficult. At the time, I thought it was for the best. What is it? It's the story about your father working in a bike shop in Reading. What do you mean, story? I'm sorry, but that's all it was. A story. I made it all up. There never was anyone called Nick. But I found him. He didn't... That's just a bizarre coincidence. I never actually thought you'd find someone. You see, I hoped you'd come to a dead end and give up. But why? Because I didn't want you to find your real father. Why? Who is he? His name's Marcus. He was a guy I met in Stoke before I went to uni. Well, why didn't you just tell me the truth? Why did you have to lie to me? When Ollie heard, he, he said that I should tell you, but... I know I should have, but I thought it was for the best. I thought you'd soon get fed up with looking for this Nick and, and give up. Why were you so determined that I shouldn't find my real father? I was trying to protect you. I didn't want you to get involved with him. What's wrong with him? What aren't you telling me? Come on, Eleanor. She has the right to know. He's in prison. He's serving a long sentence, a very long sentence. That's why I lied to you. What did he do? He attacked a man and very seriously injured him. In a fight or something? No. He was part of a political group, Animal Rights. He was on a raid, on a laboratory, when he attacked a man who was working there. It was a totally unprovoked and vicious attack. The man was an innocent victim. It ruined his life. And a dinner on the go. Hi, Dad. I am starving. Hi, kid. Ooh. Two cracking lectures at college today. Oh, thanks for this, love. Couldn't do my shift at the chippy without a decent meal inside me. Could I, son? Hey? It's not gonna take anyone who needs change. See you later on, okay? You two had a good chat while I was at college, I can see that. You okay? As okay as a spoiled brat can be. Ah. Right. Sure, Peter, on the way back. Was he all right? Didn't speak to him. I was in a mad rush. He looked okay. Oh, right. Wonder what he'll do with his money. Pay off his loan, I suppose. You don't think the bank will say anything, do you? Well, they have to, love. Yeah. There's laws about it. Fellow wanders in with a fist full of used fivers, and well, the bank has to tell the busies. I won't be long. I've just got a few things to pick up. OK? See you later. Bye. Bye. I wonder how much he's changed after 18 years in prison. Probably a totally different person. Well, was he ever violent before he attacked the man in the lab? No, he was always hot-headed, but never actually violent. Well, maybe it was self-defence. The man might have provoked him. He didn't. There were witnesses who said he just went totally berserk. It was such a shock to find out that someone you love so much could be so violent. Well, did you speak to him about it afterwards? No. He was kept on remand until the trial, but... I couldn't bear to face him. Not just because of the attack, but, well, after his arrest, the police found explosives in his flat. 
He was making bombs. Well, I don't know if he was prepared to actually go that far, but it really frightened me. I just had to make a clean break. Did he know you were pregnant? Yeah. But he doesn't know about me. He wrote to me during the first few months in prison, but I didn't reply. I just tried to put him out of my life. He and I have got something in common there. Oh, Louise! I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It's just all been such a shock. There I was, looking for Nick, the bike repair man, only to find that he doesn't even exist. And now all of this. I know, but surely you can understand why I tried to keep it all from you. Well, yeah, but whatever he's done, he's still my dad. I still want to meet him. Well, I can't blame you for that. Don't you ever think about him? I tried not to for so long that, well, eventually I managed to shut him out of my mind completely. And then I turned up. Yes. And I'm really glad you did. Despite all of this? Yes. I suppose it's been a relief to finally get it out in the open. I've kept it to myself for so long. Does Ollie know the whole story? I only told him recently. He wasn't very happy when he found out that I'd kept it from you. It was him who insisted that I should tell you everything. Well, I'm glad you have. Really? Yeah, really. Oh, thank God for that. I thought she was never going to take Will for us walk. I'll have to be gone myself in a minute. Mick will go ballistic if I'm late. Dad, do you know what you were saying about the police? Well, what happens if Peter tells them where he got the money from? I'm telling you, love. He'll be making a big mistake if he drags Barry's name into it. No, I mean me. I mean, what if he tells them I was involved? Oh. Well, he could. It's the perfect way of paying me back for all the trouble I've caused him. Love, he is not going to do that. We're doing more harm than good. The police have probably impound the money till they manage to convict someone. Or they might discover it's marked money from a bank job or oh. something. Peter'd end up on the inside himself. I'm serious, <laughs> Dad. I mean, things are bad enough as they are. I couldn't bear it if the police came round asking loads of questions. They won't, love. Peter's got more sense than that. The last thing he'd want is more trouble now he's got the money back. I'm getting off. And hey, stop worrying. It's not gonna come back on your terms. been a bit mind-blowing, but I think I'm coping. Good. It's, uh... Well, it's not every day you find out so much about who you are, who your parents are. Yeah, it's strange. I've had this mental picture of my father being some slightly hippie-ish bicycle repair man, and now that's all gone. Have you got any old photos of him? No, sorry, nothing. Um, there are some photocopies of old newspaper cuttings that I got from the archives in the library. Can I see them? Yes, of course. They're in the office. I still want to try and find him, in spite of, well, you know. Right. It is okay with you, isn't it? Well, now that you know, I suppose you're able to make that decision for yourself. Even though it might be painful for you, digging up the past. Well, he's your father. You have the right to find him. So will you help me? Yes, if that's what you want. Okay, Jack. Oh, yeah, terrific. Look, as you go and save table seven, the week. Mike, did you find him? I don't know where he is. Well, he definitely wasn't in the bungalow. Oh, there's no one set and there's no lights on either. Well, what about Bing? Has he seen him? He's in the garage. He's not over there. Well, where is he then? Well, I don't know. Look, Mike, I had to agree to what Barry wants. I had no choice. Yeah. Well, I just hope you can live with yourself. That's unfair. And what you did to me, Dad, wasn't. <sighs> Look, I'll try ringing him again. He might have just been having a lie down, or maybe he's gone out walking somewhere. Hello. 
Right. You have reached David right. Crosby. I'm You're sorry, right. But I'm unable to take Aren't you going to answer the telephone? Now I'm being leaving. After the tone. Dad, it's me. Will you ring us, please? We're dead worried about you. Right. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why are you just sitting here like this? Jacqueline sounded concerned about you. What's happened? Bing, just leave it, please. Imagine the trauma of having a serious accident in a foreign country. Meet the people who provide international rescue when dream holidays become nightmares in Cutting Edge, next on 4.